put up Marsh Pod. I apologize uh, for the for the lack of a pod on Tuesday. It was up in in the most magical place in the world, Disney World, with the family for Christmas. Um, little little rankings for you, little power rankings, Walt Disney World style. Preface it with by saying, as a annual pass holder, um, been around the block a couple times. Um, but entering the holiday weekend, the 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 power rankings were um, number one Epcot, number two Hollywood Studios, three Animal Kingdom, four Magic Kingdom. Close of the vacation, Epcot one, but moving up to number two is Animal Kingdom, Hollywood to three, Magic Kingdom to four. Uh, it's 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 inarguable. I think at this point, those are the those are the, the the correct order for any sane person. Magic Kingdom should not be number one. Uh, if you have Magic Kingdom number one on your list, you're you're wrong. Uh, it's just not the best. It's overcrowded. Uh, there's too much to do. If that seems so uh, possible, to the point that everybody is doing something. You go to the other parks, you can find little spots to kind of hang out. The the saving grace for Magic Kingdom is twofold. It's got the best ride in the park. Although that could be unseated very soon. It's got Space Mountain. Top, top ride uh, at me. Um, but it's also got Tom Sawyer Island. Nice little nice little hideaway. Don't have kids, but if you had kids, that's the spot to go. But that, it's otherwise, it's crowded. It's overcrowded. And they do have, at Casey's Corner, corn dog nuggets. Top three food in Disney. Not counting the festivals at Epcot because they come out with some bangers. Though the the festival of the holidays food, little little bit of a miss by a lot of them. Not quite as good as some of the other ones, but that's our Disney top four uh, top four rankings. New rankings: Epcot one, Animal Kingdom two. The reason Animal Kingdom number two, we did a did a um, behind the scenes tour there, where it was like a private safari. You got to walk over uh, some rickety bridges. You got to see animals. Not just driving by in a car or in a, in a truck. It was elite. It was cold though. It was cold. Uh, 40s. I mean, that's not that's not Florida. But anyway, that's it. Animal Kingdom number two, Hollywood Studios three, Magic Kingdom four. Um, yeah, undisputable. Back to the stuff you're actually here for. Simwold hoops. Continue to have some good tournaments, and I think we're. Oh, I gotta rewatch um, the the symbiotes. I've gotta I've gotta do that. I I am fully admitting to that. My hoop fest live take is not gonna be live here. Um, I'm gonna try to combine a little bit of these holiday ones. I know that we've got um, Havoc in the Heartland. That's coming up. That's New Year's uh, Eve and New Year's Eve Eve. Um, that's coming up obviously this weekend. So we're gonna kind of combine Havoc and Hoop Fest live into a a little reaction, but it, unfortunately, folks, I mean, Benari James, he gets to keep talking. He, you know, he, initial reaction, obviously, it's not his, re- he's not the reason the symbiotes won. Um, that honor would go to Reza Red, but Benari James won, and he's kind of like the kid on the playground that his mom buys him the best gear. And his dad pays for him to get the best trainer, but he's not the best player out there. But he somehow gets paired with one of the best players and therefore wins and therefore thinks he's the best. There's a long runway for Benari James. Unfortunately, we're going to keep hearing from him. But I think, I don't really have a take on this one, but this is more of a, an observation, a, a curiosity, if you will. As we've gone through... Let me do some great radio and count on screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tournaments now, I believe. Um, my numbers, my counting was not always great, but I think we're at eight. Um, one of the things that stands out, and it's kind of a couple things, Barry Breakers is in a lot of these, okay? Um, <laughs> the great news is they've got some really good basketball players. The bad news is, Dre Pope, you better be as good at coaching as these guys are at playing. I mean, these dudes are ramping up the pressure on you to have to be, uh, you know, at least something above average. Um, these dudes are coming out, and they're just playing great. Um, 
they've been overall a really good basketball team, uh, top to bottom. So, Dre, I mean, I'm sorry, buddy, but you're going to have to really coach well. I mean, it's as simple as that. They won the Mid-Atlantic Showcase, or Super so- Showcase, excuse me. They won top of the mountain. They've been hanging around in others, uh, lost in the championship game at Big Apple. I mean, this is a really good basketball team, amping up the expectations of Alan Trey Pope. That's not the observation, though. The observation that I've had, we haven't seen, especially recently, a whole lot of uh, representation, that's the word, from the originators, uh, Run DMV, and especially most recently, uh, Gotham Five. I know Bellardi's boys early on in the in the preseason tournament cycle got a win. They were they were relevant, but most recently we haven't gotten a lot from the originators, um, and and Run DMV. That's not a take. It's just an observation. And the observation is, if that continues. This could mean something. This could mean nothing. These are five on five games. They're on. They're three v three. They're they're full court. They're half court. All of them are uncoached. But the lack of appearances by especially the originators and, and Run DMV on on a full scale to me makes me wonder. We we all felt, and I think that that we weren't wrong in feeling that uh, Coach Pilardi. Coach Murray and Coach Dodge coming in as probably the top three. That is going to be put to the test, obviously, but I think it's got an opportunity to put to the, be put to the test in the opposite direction, right? Let's say Dre Pope comes in here. Uh, Brian Loveless now has a, a, a legitimately talented roster, and both of them just start really putting together good stretches of wins. Well, if that were to happen, obviously that's great. Obviously that's great, but. What that ends up doing now is kind of muddying the water of who is sitting at the top of the coach power rankings. But if any of those three coaches now, Bellardi, Murray, or Dodge, again, who we kind of entered as these are our top three, if they take teams that weren't really doing a lot in the preseason and continue to improve them, the maybe overhyped now just becomes like adequate hype. The the over power ranked or, or overrated, excuse me, now becomes like accurately if not underrated because we just haven't seen that representation. Meanwhile, as we said, Dre Pope, there's some expectations. Um, Coach Laster in Miami, Yacht Club. Expectations are starting to be built off of the success that these coaches are having um, in the off season. And if they are unable to to continue that, then you start to have to wonder, is the right person leading the charge? And then on the opposite side, if if Coach Murray, if Coach Pilardi, if Coach Dodge, again, we say those three because they just were last season the top three coaches uh, in the league, if they come in and they start to have really good seasons, which is possible, then I think we need to start really taking a harder look at saying, did we underrate them? even if it felt like we were overrating them. That's how this is this is squaring up. I think that's good. That's a good thing that we have parity in this league. Last year, granted, we saw some surprising runs from Seattle and Houston, but that didn't create parity. We didn't sit here and say, oh, those teams were good. We said those were shocking upsets. We didn't look at, you know, as a nation, watch UMBC beat Virginia and say, wow, yep, UMBC, that's a top 32 team in college basketball. No. No, we didn't. But if Bay Area, if LSD, if Yacht Club start infiltrating the top or top echelon that we thought existed just in New York, Washington, and New England, that's good for basketball. That's good for some world hoops because you don't just turn it on when a big name or a big team is playing. You turn it on because there's always a big name and a big team playing. All right, we'll be back uh, on the opposite side of the new year. Happy early new year to everybody. We'll be back with a, with a recap of the next next tournament and the last one. And uh, it's Benari James' world, man. I mean, we just need to sit there and call Benari James our daddy. All right, see you then.